So get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Joe and Amy start from the same point and run in opposite directions. Joe runs two miles per hour faster than Amy. After three hours, they are 30 miles apart. How fast did each person run? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can solve this, we'll put your solution into the comment section. And then of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Let's just take one more quick look at the question. So Joe and Amy start from the same point and run in opposite directions. Joe runs two miles per hour faster than Amy. After three hours, they are 30 miles apart. How fast did each person run? Okay, so first things first. First, we have a lovely math word problem. Always use the rule of three, which is read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Now, I've already read the problem a couple of times, so I'm not going to read this problem again. But the first time you see a problem, always get in the habit, again, of slowing down. Because uh, typically what students do, uh, they'll read a problem, they'll get excited. They're like, oh, I know how to solve this type of problem. They'll start doing something, and then they'll miss a detail, or they don't fully understand the question. All right, but uh, here we have Joe and Amy. Uh, they're running in opposite directions. Joe runs faster than Amy, and after three hours, uh, they are 30 miles apart. So how can we kind of get started with uh, the solution to this problem? Well, you always want to try to visualize or model a problem if you can. And here we can kind of come up with a quick sketch, something like this that kind of illustrates uh, visually what's going on, right? So here is the point maybe where they started to run from. So Amy and Joe are going in opposite directions, maybe like west and east, uh, but they're not going at like, let's say some sort of angle like, like so, okay? This is not uh, opposite directions. It's literally gotta be exactly opposite, right? So basically uh, along this uh, same line, maybe like a road or something like this. Okay, so after three hours, they are 30 miles apart. Obviously Joe is running this way, Amy's running this way, and after three hours, they are 30 miles apart. So this is um, part of the problem. This gives us a good start, but there's some other details in here, which uh, basically Joe is running faster than Amy, so we're gonna definitely need to use this part of the uh, problem, this uh, piece of information, to figure this thing out. But what is the question here? Well, the question is, is how fast is each person uh, running? So we don't really um, you know, know uh, any more information that what we have in this problem. So we need to kind of think about some variables here. Well, what could we use? Well, when you are thinking uh, about algebra, okay, or how to use algebra to solve a word problem, let your variables represent in a general, um, this is pretty much how you want to do it in all algebra word problems, but uh, you know there are, of course, exceptions to everything. But here, the question is, how fast is each person running? So we have to think about some variables, maybe like X and Y, and maybe it's a good idea to let, uh, let's say the variable X represent how fast Joe is running and maybe let the variable Y represent how fast uh, Amy is running because this is what we're uh, looking for, right? If we can figure out what X and Y are, well, then we will have solved the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually uh, uh, formalize this kind of thinking. So we'll write this down. We'll let X equals uh, Joe's speed in miles per hour, and then we'll let Y equals uh, Amy's speed in miles per hour. Now, why miles per hour? Well, because our problem, the information in the problem is uh, dealing with miles and hours, and we're also being told here that Joe runs two miles per hour faster than Amy. So you gotta make sure you have the correct units of measure. So miles per hour is what we want to be using. Okay, so uh, that is our variables. And when you are uh, doing any algebra or math word problem, you wanna delineate 
uh, you know, the very, especially in algebra, you got to let someone else know, hey, what your variables stand for. Someone like your teacher or yourself, if you go back, because if you just start saying, okay, X is this, and you don't even know what X represents, well, then you can get confused. And obviously your teacher will not know uh, what your variables represent. Okay, so this is the first part of this problem. We have some variables. Now we need to build some equations because our goal is to solve for X and Y. But we can't do anything here unless we understand a formula that has to deal with motion problems. And this formula is an absolute must know. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. Okay, so I have a table. I'll explain this table here in a second. But this is the formula that you must understand if you are any sort of math student, okay? Because these problems are everywhere in mathematics. Again, motion problems. And the formula is rate times time is equal to distance. All right, let me give you a simple example, then we'll take a look at this um, uh, table. All right, so rate. Rate is your speed, effectively. So if you have a car, and a car is going uh, 60 miles per hour, that is the rate of the car. Now, if this car goes for one hour, okay, 60 miles per hour, and it goes for one hour of time, so rate times time or speed times time is equal to the distance the car will have gone. All right, so 60 miles per hour times one is obviously 60, so the car will have gone 60 miles in one hour. Now, or one hour. So this seems like common sense, but we have to be very aware of the units of measure here. So miles per hour is actually a rate. In other words, we could write it this way, miles per one hour, and we're, mul we're multiplying that, excuse me, by one hour, okay? So what's going on here is this is a fraction, and uh, these units of measure are being cross-canceled, and we're left with miles as our answer. So anytime you use a formula, you must be very aware of the units of measure. But this particular formula, again, rate times time is equal to distance, is one thing that you definitely want to kind of put away in your long-term memory. Okay, so now that we understand the formula and we have some variables here that represent uh, Joe and Amy's speed, what we can do is organize all this information in the problem uh, this way using a table. And a table is a very good way to organize information in solving algebra word problems. So it's not the only way you can do this problem, but it's a, a pretty classic way of doing it. So if you like using tables, well, this is a perfect type of problem for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and have some columns here. Or uh, and Basically, we have four columns. So we have uh, the people that are involved, which of course is uh, Joe and Amy. And then we're, uh, we have rate times time is equal to distance. Rate times time is equal to distance. And we're just basically gonna start filling in the blanks. Okay, so what is Joe's rate? Okay, well that is Joe's speed. Well, we don't know that, right? But we did say that X is going to represent Joe's speed in miles per hour, and Y will be Amy's speed in miles per hour. So we're going to put those, we'll put in X and Y as the rate or speed for Joe and Amy. Okay, now the time is what? Well, remember, the problem said that they uh, ran for three hours, okay? Three hours, and then in those three hours, they were 30 miles apart, okay? But that is the time, right? So... Right over here for time, we're going to put three, okay? And this represents three hours. Now, the distance, some of you might be saying, well, hey, let's just put in 30. Well, no. Remember, rate times time is equal to distance. So the distance for Joe is uh, three times X. So rate times time is equal to distance. X times three or three X is this distance for Joe. And then three times Y or three Y is the distance for Amy. Okay, now here... Once we have this table kind of figured out, what we need to do is build ourselves some equations. Now let's notice how many variables we are dealing with. Well, we have X and Y. So in order to solve uh, for X and Y, we will need two separate equations. So kind of the rule of thumb in algebra is how many variables you're looking to solve for. In this case, we're looking to solve for two variables. That's how many equations we are going to need to build in order to solve for both X and Y. Okay, so let's go ahead and build these equations. So our first one is this. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. 
So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. The total distance between Joe and Amy is 30 miles. All right, so this is 3x plus 3y is equal to 30. Let's understand this equation right here. Okay, so this is Joe's distance right here. 3x, this is how far Joe ran in those three um, uh, hours. Amy ran this distance, 3y, but uh, both of their distances together make up that 30 miles. So if we add up Joe and Amy's distance, how much they ran, well, it's going to be equal to 30 miles. Okay, so this is the first uh, uh, equation, hopefully, that most of you um, saw that we can build. Now, the second one is hopefully pretty obvious. We're going to use this part of the problem. Joe runs two miles per hour faster than Amy. Okay, so this is Joe's speed. Remember, X in miles per hour. So this is Amy's speed. Okay, so if Joe is running two uh, miles per hour faster than Amy, well, we're going to take Amy's speed, add two to it, and that is Joe's speed. So X is equal to Y plus two. Okay, so we're almost ready to kind of go to the next phase of the problem, and that is what we have is a lovely linear is a uh, lovely linear system <laughs> kind of almost tripped on my words there all right so this is a, specifically this is what we call a two variable linear system it's something that you uh, pretty much learn how to solve in any kind of first year algebra course so at this point let's suppose if you're confused on how to set up this problem Okay, but now you're like, oh, okay, uh, I get this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, that's perfect, but let's see if you can actually solve this system because this is kind of like another phase of this problem. All right, so now that we have this uh, system right here, two-variable linear system, we need to solve for X and Y. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, hopefully you're thinking in terms of the substitution method or uh, elimination or linear combination method. Those are going to be the two primary uh, techniques to use here. Both are very good, but this uh, particular problem is going to be very easy to solve with the substitution method because of this right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to do that. So first things first, uh, we have 3x plus 3y is equal to 30 and x is equal to y plus 2. Now notice I'm putting some parentheses around y plus 2. Now, why am I doing that? Because when you uh, use the substitution method, what you want to do is solve for one variable in one of the equations. Now, here we already have x uh, basically solved for in this equation, so this is you know pretty uh, straightforward to use the substitution method. But a lot of students, or a lot of people, will make mistakes uh, because they don't have parentheses around what x or y might be solved for. So get in the habit of putting parentheses around your sums and differences just like this, because this is going to be a reminder that when you replace this X right here, the way the substitution method works is that we're going to replace this X uh, in this other equation with this uh, stuff right here, Y plus two. But when we do that, we have to have these parentheses. And if they're not there, you want to kind of write them in there. Because if you don't, here we have three, we're going to replace this X with Y plus two. But if we didn't have the parentheses, what ends up happening pretty frequently is that students just go, oh, 3y plus 2, that's what this is, uh, you know, what that's equal to. And that is absolutely wrong. Okay, you have to use uh, parentheses because that's going to remind you to use the distributive property. Okay, so if you are having difficulty with any of this stuff, uh, the algebra, you know, how to solve a linear system, I'll give you uh, some specific suggestions here in just one second. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is uh, using the distributive property to multiply 3 times y plus 2 and then kind of walk this uh, um, equation forward. Now, look here. What we have is one equation in one variable y. So we're going to solve for y. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with this problem. So we just replaced this 3x plus 3y is equal to 30. We, uh, we replaced x with y plus 2 using parentheses. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead 
and use the uh, distributive property, excuse me, 3y, 3 times y is 3y, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 3y is equal to 30. So now we can combine like terms. So we have 3y here, 3y there. That's 6y. So we have 6y plus 6 is equal to 30. Almost there. So now we want to get all of our variables on the left-hand side. Uh, so we have all of our variables all nice and tidy on the left, which is 6y. But here we want to get our numbers on the right. So we need to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. So we have 6y is equal to 24. And to solve for y, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6. And we get y is equal to 4. Okay, so remember, we are solving for two variables, x and y, and we have two equations with both x and y in them. So we use the substitution method to get one equation with only one variable. In this case, it was one equation with just y, and we solved for y. Okay, so y is equal to 4. So now that we know what y is equal to, it's very easy to go back and figure out what x is equal to. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, now you can go back into any of the equations in the system, but we already know that x is equal to y plus 2. Okay, well, now that we know that y is equal to 4 and we want to figure out what x is equal to, well, we'll just replace this y with 4. Okay, so that's going to be 4 plus 2 or 6. So x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 4. And that makes sense because, remember, x and y represent uh, in ter um, the speed of both Joe and Amy in miles per hour. Okay, so Joe's speed is x, and Joe is running 2 miles per hour faster, so 6 and 4 are separated by 2. So this, uh, pro or this solution looks to be pretty good. Of course, y is Amy's speed, so there you go. All right, so again, a pretty classic uh, type of problem. You're guaranteed to see a lot of these problems in uh, all levels of mathematics. So you got to know this uh, formula right here, rate times time is equal to distance. You have to know how to uh, work with the units of measure, but all this stuff you can learn, okay? The, the key here is to figure out what you know and don't know and just work on the things that you don't know, okay? But you don't, you know, uh, you know, what you don't want to do is get discouraged and just keep trying to solve problems if you're missing, you know, particular skills that you need to solve those problems. So stop what you're doing in terms of word problems and things like that. Go back and say, all right, I don't understand how to solve a system. I don't understand this formula so much, da, 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 da. Make yourself a little math shopping list and work on those particular skills. Once you do, once you kind of approach math in that way, everything is going to get a lot better. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.